I love casseroles because it's all in there and they just make, you know, making dinner so easy. You can make them ahead of time. You've got company coming. Uh, but there are some secrets when it comes to making a really great casserole. I think we've all had that casserole that was okay, could have been a little bit better. Uh, well, my casseroles, I hate to brag, but um, they're really, really good. And I have a few secrets to make them that way. So a sip of coffee and I'm going to get to work. Now this is a new casserole recipe and I'm really excited about it because um, it's got a lot of my favorite things in it and also my husband Bob is going to love it. Um, I always say one of the reasons he married me, and I know it's true, is because um, I had him over for dinner one time and I made this amazing chicken casserole. The recipe for that is in the cookbook, um, but anyway, um, I know that was the way to his heart. And thank goodness he likes casseroles. I've been making them ever since. Uh, but he loves chicken. So this is a chicken casserole. He also happens to love broccoli. And he, you know, who doesn't love cheese? So this is a chicken broccoli bake, lots of chicken and cheese and creaminess and wonderfulness. So the first thing I did is I've got a nice big casserole dish. And they're so pretty these days. Spray it with cooking spray. That's definitely a secret. Uh, casseroles, the one bad part about them is they can really leave a mess in your casserole dish and you can be in the kitchen uh, doing the dishes on this casserole. It can take days. So spray those casserole dishes. Now I've got four to six, just depends on how many people you want to serve, boneless, skinless chicken breast. This is a nice big casserole dish so we could have probably squeezed a couple more in here. But this will feed my family perfectly. Now. You notice I just put the raw chicken in. So this is another one of my secrets. We're not taking the time to brown it. In some of my recipes, you know, I'll take that extra few minutes to brown up the chicken breasts in some olive oil or butter, and that of course gives it more flavor. But you know, sometimes it's just, you just don't have time to do that. And this is one of those recipes where it works really well if you know you don't have to brown it because we've got so many other flavors going on. But if you're doing that, uh, you really need to season it well. So I've got salt and pepper. And this is another one of our secrets here on the show, actually given to us by one of our chef friends. This is one cup of kosher salt, which all the chefs are using this day, these days. It's not um, hard to find. You find it right near the regular salt in the grocery store. It's not expensive. And one tablespoon of coarsely ground black pepper. So you mix the one cup of kosher salt and the one tablespoon of black pepper together. Uh, keep it in a container by your stove. And any, every time you're cooking, you just need a pinch of this salt and pepper. You've got it right on hand. So works great. So season up those chicken breasts really well with salt and pepper. And then we're going to get working on um, the creaminess that's going to hold this casserole together. Now, one of the things that I think um, a casserole can go wrong is that they can get dry. Dry as Arizona desert. And that does not make a good casserole in my book. I really like creamy, rich, wonderful casseroles. Now remember, casseroles are baking in the oven, and especially if they've got pasta, potatoes, or rice. Those things just soak up the liquid, and then you could be left with a really dry casserole. Uh, now this one doesn't have any of the rice, potatoes, or pasta, but it's great with uh, serve with rice, mashed potatoes, or pasta. So it's, I want it really nice uh, to have a nice creamy uh, chicken cheesy uh, gravy is what we're going to call it. So it starts out with two cans of cream of chicken soup. And I know there's some people out there that give me a hard time about, does every one of your recipes have cream of chicken soup in it? No, not everyone, but a lot of my recipes have cream of something soup in it. Why? Because it tastes really good and it's really easy. And a lot of casserole recipes will just have one can of cream of whatever soup. Most of mine, I double it, give it more flavor, and do two cans. So that's another one of my secrets. Got a whole chapter of my casseroles in my cookbook. And you'll notice that just about every one of them has two cans of, if, it's, if it calls for a cream of something soup, it's normally got a couple of cans, not just one. And that, again, just more flavor and more more creaminess. This is another one of my secrets. One of those nice long spatulas really works to get that soup out of the can. Get every little last bit of it out there, out of that can. Alrighty. 
Now, we don't want it to taste like canned soup, so this is where I'm going to add a few more secret ingredients to really jazz it up and make this casserole a little more gourmet. It's just going to taste like a million bucks. It's going to be company worthy, you know, and I love that. I mean, you know, even for my family, I just want it to taste um, a little more special. So one of my tricks is to add um, in some of my casseroles, and in a lot of my cooking, a little bit of wine. Um, and that's something that the French have been doing forever, and Julia Child and all the chefs do it, and it just adds great flavor. So it doesn't have to be an expensive bottle of wine. This happens to be just one of the little guys that you can get at the liquor store. Um, very inexpensive. And always get your wine for cooking in the liquor store. You don't want to buy it in the actual grocery store part of the store, that's, a, that's a more of a fortified wine in, uh, that you'd find there and has spices and things. This is the stuff that you actually, you could drink. Um, so basically I'm going to add a little bit of dry white wine um, or you could do chicken stock. If you don't want to cook with wine, I get it, although in most cases the alcohol will cook right out and you're just left with some really great flavor. Um, but some people just don't want to have to run out and buy it or they just don't believe in cooking it with it and I totally understand that and respect that. Uh, chicken stock would work just fine in this. Give it some great flavor. Okay, now I've got a cup of sour cream and this is also just going to make this really rich and yummy and wonderful. A cup of mayonnaise. I just want to check the one we have going on in the oven here. Oh yeah, I'm turning it off because it looks beautiful and I want to show it to you in a minute. So this is just going to take this to the next level. The one cup of sour cream, one cup of mayo. I've got some milk. Cup of milk and then I'm just going to whisk this together. Add a little more salt and pepper. And this is that easy. I mean, this is so easy. You can whip this together in minutes. Just want to get the lumps out of it. Make sure it's combined really well. And now we're going to stir in some broccoli. I love the combination of chicken and broccoli together. Um, and so does Bob, so that's why I know he's gonna love this. This is just one bag of frozen uh, broccoli that we've let thaw a little bit. You don't have to cook it because it's gonna cook in the oven. And this happens to be just the cut broccoli. You could also use chopped broccoli. You could use fresh broccoli. If you've got leftover broccoli, that would work. But one of the secrets to a really good casserole is I, you need to plan what's in it. If you open the refrigerator and throw everything in there, in it, it just usually doesn't work out so well. So all of my casseroles do have a recipe and um, you know, you can improvise a little bit, um, but I, you know, I like to really kind of think about what I'm putting in there. Okay, so at this point, this gets poured right over our chicken breasts. And like I say, this is really great because everything's right in here. If you wanted to serve uh, mashed potatoes or some rice with it, you could, but you certainly don't have to. But you've got your broccoli in here and your chicken, but you're gonna have some nice gravy. And so Bob always likes, uh, well, he's a rice person, so he would love this with wild rice. And you're a big wild rice person too. You'd like that served with wild rice too, wouldn't you? Yep. Yes, I knew it. Okay, now. Here's the other secret part of my recipes. Well, this part isn't really much of a secret. Most of my recipes have some sort of wonderful toppings, and that's just really what takes casseroles to a whole new level. Uh, this recipe calls for two cups of shredded cheddar cheese. And who's measuring? You could certainly add on some more, but I mean, who doesn't like the combination of broccoli and cheese together? I, I know I do. And then you get this into the oven covered with foil and because that chicken is raw it's going to take its time cooking. Cover it with foil, bake it at 350 for about an hour and then after it bakes I take some croutons. I love a crunchy on top whether it be I use potato chips, I use taco chips, I use Fritos, I use crushed pretzels. I do a recipe with mac and cheese that's got bacon and beer and you put crushed pretzels on top. Um, uh, there's so many different great crunchies that you can put on top of a casserole and that's really one of my favorite parts of casseroles are the crunchies. So this just happens to be um, store-bought or homemade croutons. 
that I give a rough chop to. And after this bakes for about an hour, I take the foil off, sprinkle my crushed garlic croutons on top, and bake it for another uh, 15, 20 minutes until the casserole is bubbly, the chicken is cooked through, and those croutons get golden and delicious on top. So let me show it to you. It smells amazing. And that's an easy one. Really, really easy. Not too many steps in that. And definitely company worthy. Serve that with a nice Caesar salad and a, one of my great easy trifle desserts. And once again, mom looks like a rock star and you gotta love that. So there you go. It's my chicken broccoli bake. You can see how those croutons get nice and um, brown on top and the cheese underneath. And oh, find me a fork. I can hardly wait to dig in.